Awesome. Um, hi everyone, my name is Martin. Uh, before my speech, I have to say thank you to Hannah who put this amazing um, event. We all know personal project is hard. Thank you, Rich. Uh, we all know personal project is hard, and I have to say this is probably the most general personal project of the grade. Uh, because it gives us a chance to stand here and talk about favorite things that we love. We talk about our favorite music, we talk about Stephen Curry, our favorite basketball player, we talk about our experiences and our ideas. And that is basically what the topic is, individuality. We're here to talk about our individuality, and that's why I believe freedom of expression coexists with individuality so much that sometimes we just need to express ourselves. So um, I'm going to be talking about freedom of expression, understanding. Um, I would like everyone to just imagine for a second, if we take a newborn baby, a newborn baby who just arrived at the earth and then we don't speak a word to him or her, what would be the first thing that this baby says? This is such an interesting question. It could be, it could be any language on earth, or it could be a language that we don't even know yet, alien language. It is so exciting that a group of German scientists who studies human behaviors started doing this experiment about a century ago, I think. They took the newborn baby. They raised him like how all of us are raised. But the one thing that their parents shouldn't have done and they, they, they shouldn't do is to talk to him. In, la in any language, they shouldn't talk to this baby. We thought, with expectations of this experiment, we thought, um, we could find a new language, but the result is quite devastating. The baby died after three months, and um, the experiment of, obviously was cut, shut off because we thought it was not humane. But the results didn't turn up as we expected, but it offers us a new lesson that we should learn, and that is expressing, talking, communicating. It's so important to us that if we don't talk, we will die eventually. And that's why I want to talk about freedom of expression and understanding. Um, I'm not a social um, scientist or I'm not studying um, human behaviors at any time, so I really don't have anything to talk about. But I do have four interesting stories that I want to share with all of you today. That is the story of my little cousin. My little cousin is very annoying. He's probably the most annoying kid on earth. Do you remember the the time when we were like four years old and we just started talking with the four or five words that we knew we wanted to talk all day long the words are usually just dad, mom, nam nam nam, dad, dad, dad but those are the words that we want to talk with and all day my little cousin he wanted to shout every time he sees a car drive through and you know how many cars there are in Beijing we were walking on the streets he was just shouting whenever car, car, he couldn't even say car for God's sakes and then I was so embarrassed because everybody was looking at us. And I just told my mom, Mom, can you just sh shut him off and look at everybody looking at us? I'm just going to leave now. And my mom would always tell me, you were worse than this. And I thought, how is it even possible to be worse than a kid like this? I couldn't believe her until I saw a video of myself running without pants in a park, screaming like an ambulance. I, I don't do that. I, I don't do that anymore. But um, that was embarrassing. But it is true that all of us had the urge of expressing. Just go to the title. Oh, so it works. Boom. That was the first story. His non-stop screaming. And um, when it's too loud, right? You can't really hear a thing. It's, it's very hard to communicate in a loud environment. My little cousin is, uh, was in kindergarten a few years ago. And you got, you got a, this is a really cool experience because you have to go into a pile of little kids and experience. I was helping my aunt to pick up my little cousin. It was the first time I do it, so I had no idea what to expect. But the moment I walked into that door, that classroom door, I was confused. It was mess. It was swirling. Uh, it, was, it was like the universe. It was like laundry in your washing machine. You can see these kids just swirling around. You can see these two little girls holding hands and just running and smashing everyone in the face like they were trying to keep a unified hide of the room. And then you can see these boys just pushing and then hugging and then pushing and hugging. It was loud, it was annoying. But as I look across the room, I see my little cousin at the corner talking to a little girl. And I was so proud of him. I was so proud of him starting things early. It was, it was mess, but then right there it was quiet. It was quiet, it was maturity. And I was trying to 
you know, hear what they were saying. I was trying to peek. And then I realized they weren't talking. I mean, they were trying to talk, but they were not establishing a conversation at all. All they were doing was just shouting at each other and ignoring each other at the same time. And it is absolutely amazing how they can still talk for 20 minutes. And that is the story of, about my little cousin and his nonsense communication. Eventually, my little cousin is a nice guy. He's like any other kids. He loves to play with Legos. I joined him with his um, stupid little project on Legos. It was about building a red race car. Uh, being a responsible young adult, I know how to handle kids, right? I teach him how to do this. I teach him how to join the two little red blocks with a pick. I teach him how to do basically most of the work because he's young and I'm responsible. I know what to do. It was, we spent an entire weekend on it and uh, we couldn't finish. So I came back the next weekend. I walk into the door. I see him sitting on the sofa with the red race car complete in front of his face. And he was smiling like he was showing off. I, I, and I told him, what's there to show off? Your aunt, um, your mom helped me, my aunt. Your mom helped you with it. And then my aunt told me, no, she was off for a business trip. And, uh, she, and my little cousin just ran to me, be like, hey, I did it myself, boom. And I just stood there, questioning my life. <laughs> I was like, how is that even possible? But then I realized I was wrong about him in the first place. He's the next Einstein. So that's the three stories. And what am I trying to say with these three stories about my annoying little cousin? First of all, expressing is what we needed ever since we were born. Understanding has been hard ever since we started expressing. And ignorance is what stops us from understanding. We, we started talking when we, 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 we felt like our mouth used to be just eating stuff and drinking milk. But then we start talking and then people can understand us. That's what expressing is. But then we find it so hard to understand. We, we felt, why, why do I need to listen to you? You don't even share the same views with me. And then we felt ignorant about myself, saying, oh, I was wrong about you. These are very complicated situations that I have to deal with every single day. So I came up with this method called nonsense expressionism, where there's three steps that you have to do in order to understand while expressing. Step one is research. In other words, you try for five minutes and then you give up. Because you can never understand a thing that you don't believe in on your own. Trust me, it is so hard, it is almost impossible. So you will always give up. And then you try to communicate. In other words, you shout. You shout it just so loud, it's loud, it's annoying, it's aggressive, but it's worth it. Not because you can convince each other, it's because you will run out of words eventually. And you have to sit there quietly and listen. Step three, listen of the word, is to force yourself to sit there and accept the other guy's words shouting at you. Those are the three steps that I find really effective. Now, you don't believe me. Why should you? We can try this in a real life situation. And that, and that brings us to the fourth story. The story of Sweeney Todd. I was involved in this project. Um, this project started like half a year ago, at the beginning of the school year. It is something that, um, for those of you who don't know, it's something that we as 10th graders need to do every, every year. It is annoying mm, to some of the people who were really into math, but not as much into art. But um, surprisingly, everyone in our grade are involved in this uh, like really much, and I'm really proud of it. So about half a year ago, uh, we started doing this project. It was a rough start, I have to say, but we managed to get everybody on board, right? But nothing was easy after that. The show got banned um, after two months of creating, rehearsing, and crafting. Um, and the reason being is it's inappropriate. Um, of course, it was, it was very confusing to me. I didn't understand it. So I kept my mouth shut. But um, I guess the conflict was resolved at the end. So we were conf confident about our show. And we wanted to bring it to WTS. But the show got banned again. And the reason being, it's inappropriate. Now, being hopeless and angry, we still kept our mouth shut. But bad news come with word news. The tickets are no longer being able to be sold online. And that's the time where we decided not to keep our mouth shut. And that's why I'm here. Um, the first step, everybody. What was the first step? Research. research. We started researching. 
and I gave up for five minutes because I couldn't understand why. So I tried communicating. For a week I shouted, and then I ran out of words, sitting there trying to understand why. Last time, I was just sitting there, not knowing what to say, and I was trying to listen. I know there's another 60 of you who want to ask the same question. Why? And trust me, I have seen for answers. But let's put that aside. Do you remember the first, um, this, is to, this is to the people in the group, right? Actress of Sweeney Todd. Do you remember the first vocal rehearsal that we ever had? Yes. I'm telling you, it was a disaster. But look at us now. You designers of costumes, do you remember the first time that we visited the class on the fourth floor? It was excitement filled with anxiety, but look at us now. You, creative set, do you remember the first time that we list all the props on the, on the whiteboard? Seeing that prop list, it was perplexed. It was like drowning in the sea, but look at us now. You, musicians of orchestra, do you remember the first time that I filmed your performance? It was also um, my first time hearing your music. And I gotta say, um, Jack, if he's, if he's here, Jack needs to work, work on his food. But look at us now. It doesn't really matter if the tickets are being sold online anymore. It doesn't really matter if we're performing on WTS anymore. Because now I strongly believe in that Sweeney Tao will be put up in this school in the first week of April. I can see us cheering backstage right there. You can see the entire way cheering there and saying we knew. What? How can I come to this conclusion, everyone? Um, I was writing about, I was writing the speech uh, because I heard that we can talk on TED and I thought it was really cool. Um, I was sitting on my desk trying to think what to say. And there was so much that I wanted to say. It was four pages of, of words that are very aggressive. As, as time goes on, I start practicing my speech over and over again in my bedroom. I start deleting words. I start deleting paragraphs. I deleted like two pages. And then what's left with me are the three stories that I wanted to share with you about my little cousin. And that is the result of research, communicate, and then listening. Because eventually, we're here, and what I, I believe expression is, is to tell our ideas, not to express things that we felt the urge to say, but, and that's what makes us different from little kids. That's what makes us different from a little cousin. We feel the urge of expressing, but then we need to understand that we are adults. We are responsible young adults who know what to say. But do you remember this? Um, uh, do you remember this? Oh okay, yeah, this is really awkward because um, I was gonna say this, and this line was written uh, when I was communicating and angry. So uh, I, should, I don't know if I should say it anymore because I realized that it's time for me to just sit back and listen and uh, I ran out of words. But do you remember this? Um, we've just started and uh, you are almost out of moves. So um, we believe that this is the time that we act. And please enjoy the video. It's all right, people. We can just ignore the video. Boom. But you have an idea. Um, okay, Ray, don't worry. Um, I didn't want to show the video anyways, because I, I, as I said, it was made a week ago and I changed a lot during this week. <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell you one last story about this morning. Um, half of the cast of Sweeney Todd were meeting at my house and we were talking about all these things that we thought wasn't fair and we thought was wrong. And after that talk, uh, that three hour talk, and I just thought to myself, what's the point of shouting anymore? And I think all of us understood now that um, we shouldn't take this chance for granted. And um, I hope, okay, where's Sean? Sean, can you raise your hand? Oh, uh, nice. Um, Sean, I just hope you can send this video to everybody and I hope that you can convince them. But eventually I want to come to a conclusion saying, um, Freedom of expression and understanding are all very important elements of our life, but eventually we need to know 
how, when is the time we stop expressing and we start understanding? So thank you everyone for listening and thank Hannah for this amazing event.